Hello everyone and welcome back to another Tesserant Threat Intelligence Briefing brought to you by our Tesserant SOC. It is great to see you all again for another webinar. I'm back again to cover all the exciting stuff that's happened this month and this is our last webinar for the year. It is almost time for the holidays. I'm sure you're all looking forward to a well-deserved break. Okay, so today will probably be a short one, but we'll be going over the Microsoft updates for this month and breaking down some of the many zero days we've seen throughout December. We've got a fix for August's AMD vulnerability and Apple and SolarWind vulnerabilities and a whole lot more to look at. And as always, I'm Holly Baker, your resident threat intelligence analyst. And once again, thank you for coming along today. All right, so let's kick off the December briefing. As always, we'll start off with a brief rundown of this month's Patch Tuesday, which was pretty quiet with only 34 vulnerabilities and one fix for a publicly disclosed zero day, which we will cover shortly. Four of the vulnerabilities addressed today are rated as critical, while the remaining 30 are rated as important. We'll also be taking a look at some SOC insights with a breakdown of the top TTPs for the month. We'll have a look at the Apache Struts 2 vulnerability, and then we'll move on to zero days along with some criticals from Patch Tuesday. And lastly, we'll tackle some of the critical patches and news from this month coming from Atlassian, VMware, Schneider Electric, and Intel. So as usual, we'll kick off with some Microsoft metrics. Bit of a quiet one this month with only 34 security patches. This month we have 10 elevation of privilege, 8 remote code execution, 6 information disclosure, 5 denial of service, and 5 spoofing. The Microsoft ESU product family received the most patches this month with 18, followed by Windows with seven updates and a tie between Azure and Office with only three updates each. And as always, here is the count by impact graph that I've put together for you. And before we move on to the zero days, I'll give you a quick look into some of our December metrics. Starting off with the top TTPs seen across our SOC this month. Up first, we have account manipulation, which is where we may see manipulation or modification of user accounts, where a threat actor will try and gain unauthorized access or control over systems. As I've said before, this is a common one we see each month. It's usually top of the charts up there with valid accounts. Up next, similarly to last month, we have valid accounts. As I just mentioned, we see a lot of activity in this area each month. In the context of the MITRE ATT&CK framework, valid accounts refers to the usage of valid credentials or attempts to bypass access controls placed on various systems. And this can also refer to leveraging existing user accounts within a targeted environment and the abuse of inactive accounts as well. Then next up, we have T1046 Network Service Discovery. This is where threat actors may attempt to get a listing of services running on remote hosts and local network infrastructure devices, including those that may be vulnerable to remote software exploitation. One of the most common alerts our SOC investigates in this area is related to network scanning, where threat actors can use specific tools to scan networks identify open ports, etc. And network scanning is also generally one of the initial steps in the reconnaissance phase of the attack process. So we have a number of detections in place to highlight this activity. Then coming in fourth, we had T1110 Brute Force. Now, according to the MITRE ATT&CK framework, this is where threat actors may use brute force techniques to gain access to accounts when passwords are unknown or when password hashes are obtained. Without knowledge of these passwords for an account or set of accounts, an adversary may systematically guess the password using repetitive or iterative mechanisms. And then lastly for this month, we had T1566, our favorite, phishing. Moving on to the talk of the town, this month we had a remote code execution vulnerability in Apache Struts 2. According to Trend Micros report, CVE 2023-50164 is intricately tied to an organization's Apache Struts architecture and the way it uses its file upload feature, enabling unauthorized path traversal that could be abused to upload malicious files and perform remote code execution. It should be noted that exploiting this vulnerability at scale becomes significantly challenging for threat actors as it lacks the same straightforward scanning and exploitation capabilities observed in CVE 2017-5638. Now, if you think you've heard of Apache Struts before, that's because it gained widespread attention during the infamous Equifax breach of 2017, which affected 145 million people worldwide. Regarding the vulnerability itself, this flaw permits an attacker to manipulate the file upload parameters, opening the door to path traversal. If you'd like to read the proof of concept for this vulnerability, I'll link the Trend Micro report at the end of this presentation. 
Now this vulnerability has been mitigated in versions 2.5.33 or 6.3.02. Okay, let's move on to some zero day vulnerabilities from this month's Patch Tuesday. Starting off with a vulnerability identified in August, CVE 2023-20588, an AMD speculative leaks flaw. This was a division by zero error on some AMD processes that could potentially return speculative data resulting in loss of confidentiality. At the time, mitigation strategies were provided, but there was no official fix for this vulnerability. The AMD advisory stated that developers could mitigate this issue by ensuring that no privileged data is used in division operations prior to changing privilege boundaries. AMD believes that the potential impact of this vulnerability is low because it requires local access. Now, as part of the December Patch Tuesday updates, this bug is now resolved and the proof of concept has already been publicly disclosed. Moving on to CVE 2023-40056, an SQL injection remote code execution vulnerability affecting the SolarWinds platform. Now, the offender advisory from SolarWinds is extremely brief, but it states that an SQL injection remote code vulnerability was found inside the SolarWinds platform. This vulnerability can be exploited with a low privileged account. Now, this refers to an SQL injection vulnerability, which is the improper neutralization of special elements used in an SQL command. So if you are using SolarWinds, please ensure you're running the latest version. And then moving on, we have CVE 2023-42826, an Apple Mac OS high drop passing out of bounds write remote code execution vulnerability. Now, this vulnerability allows remote attackers to execute arbitrary code on affected installations of Apple Mac OS. Interaction with the Hydra library is required to exploit this vulnerability, but attack vectors may vary depending on the implementation. This specific flaw exists within the Hydra framework. Crafted data in an image can trigger a write past the end of an allocated buffer. An attacker can leverage this vulnerability to execute code in the context of the current process. And Apple has released a security update to mitigate this vulnerability. All right, now that we've covered the zero days, let's take a quick look at the critical patches from this month's Patch Tuesday. Starting off with CVE 2023-36019, a critical spoofing vulnerability affecting Microsoft's Power Platform Connector with a CVSS score of 9.6. Successful exploitation of this vulnerability relies on the user clicking a specially crafted URL. Now, this vulnerability is in the web server. However, the malicious scripts execute on the victim's browser. Microsoft addressed this vulnerability by making newly created custom connectors that use OAuth 2.0 to authenticate automatically with a per connector redirect URI. Microsoft urges customers to update the existing OAuth 2.0 connectors to use a per connector redirect URI. Moving on to CVE 2023, 35630 and 35641, both critical remote code execution vulnerabilities affecting Microsoft Internet Connection Sharing, or ICS, with a CVSS score of 8.8. .8. Successful exploitation of these vulnerabilities relies on the host being connected to the same network segment as the threat actor. These vulnerabilities cannot be exploited across multiple networks. Now, even though the complexity of this attack is low, it is limited to the particular environment for the exploit to be successful. And lastly, we've got CVE 2023-35628, a critical remote code execution vulnerability affecting Windows MS HTML with a CVSS score of 8.1. An attacker would have to send a specially crafted email for the vulnerability to automatically trigger after the Outlook client has received and processed the message. This would allow the exploitation to happen before the email is viewed. Now, the attack complexity is high due to relying on complex memory shaping techniques in order to successfully exploit this vulnerability. All right, moving on to some other vendors for the month, starting off with four Atlassian critical vulnerabilities impacting Confluence, Jira, and Bitbucket. CVE 2023-22522 is a template injection flaw allowing authenticated users, including those with anonymous access, to inject unsafe inputs into a Confluence page. This has a CVSS of 9.0. The flaw impacts all Confluence data center and server versions after 4.0.0 and up to 8.5.3. Next, we have CVE 2022-22523, a privileged remote code execution vulnerability in assets discovery agent impacting Jira Service Management Cloud, server, and data center. 
This has a CVSS score of 9.8. The vulnerability asset discovery versions are anything below 3.2.0 for cloud and 6.2.0 for data center and server. Coming up next, CVE 2023-22524, a bypass of block list and Mac OS gatekeeper on the companion app for Confluence server and data center for Mac OS, impacting all versions of the app prior to 2.0.0. This has a CVSS score of 9.6. And then lastly, we have CVE 2022-22524. 1471, a remote code execution in Snake YAML library impacting multiple versions of Jira, Bitpocket, and Confluence products with a CVSS score of 9.8. Moving on from Atlassian to CVE 2023-34060. According to the VMware advisory, the VMware Cloud Director Appliance contains an authentication bypass vulnerability. VMware has evaluated the severity of this issue to be critical with a maximum CVSS base score of 9.8. Next up, we have three 9.8 critical Schneider electric vulnerabilities that dropped very recently, starting off with CVE 2023-5042, a CBUS toolkit transfer command exposed dangerous method remote code execution vulnerability. According to their advisory, an improper privilege management vulnerability exists that could cause a remote code execution vulnerability when the transfer command is used over the network. Following this, in the same advisory, we have CVE 2023-5399, where improper limitation of the path name to a restricted directory vulnerability exists that could cause tampering of files on the personal computer running CBUS when using the file command. And then lastly, CVE 2023-5391, a desterilization of untrusted data vulnerability exists that could allow an attacker to execute arbitrary code on the targeted system by sending specially crafted packets to the application. And then lastly, we have Intel this month coming in with a cheeky zero day, CVE 2023-5391, 50197, an Intel driver and support assistant link following local privilege escalation vulnerability. Intel driver and support assistant could allow a local unauthenticated attacker to gain elevated privileges on the system caused by link following in the DSA service. By creating a symbolic link, a threat actor could exploit this vulnerability to escalate privileges and execute arbitrary code in the context of systems. All right, everyone, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for coming along to today's webinar. I hope you had a great time and I'll leave this slide up so you can have a look at any references or advisories I discussed in today's briefing. Thanks again and we'll look forward to seeing you in the new year.